I first came across Steven Schellenberger's work in the late 90s when he was in one episode of La Femme Nikita. I didn't come across him again until years later in 2020 during the pandemic when I came across one of his YouTube videos which led me to discover that he'd made a film called The Spark. The Spark was available for free for quite a few weeks. I watched it and I really liked it because I thought, well he said it was a low budget film and maybe it is relatively low budget but it's not what I personally would consider to be cheapo. Anyhow, it didn't look the way I expected it to be. I expected low budget to be like um, the sort of videos my son would have made when he was six years old running around with my film, that sort of thing. It's, it's not, it's actually a very nice looking film. I watched it, I enjoyed it and I thought, well, seeing as I like what he made, I'll try and find a way to support him. So I went to his website, stephenschellenberger.com, art website, tried to purchase one of his prints, but wasn't able to do so. Anyhow, in his film, The Spark, I actually ended up purchasing, I've watched it about seven times now. After a while, I found that a sense of dread started to kick in. The first three, four times I watched it, first three, four times after The Smoking Woman, who is played by his wife, Kim Ange, and The Smoking Woman, she's a bit like the oracle in the matrix her, t her character she'd met she'd say this thing and she'd mentioned pure evil and after she mentioned this the first few times i heard it it's like my attention would just i just start daydreaming i think the reason why this happened was because i don't really understand what that means she's referring to something that maybe stephen has experienced and that maybe she knows about that i don't really comprehend and I think that's why my, my attention drifted because I don't get it. Anyhow, later on as I watched the film, a feeling of dread would just sort of fill me after this point. I'm not sure why. I've read Stephen's memoirs on the Medium app and again, I get, as I, as I come towards the end of all that he's written, a feeling of dread fills me. It's like a free-floating dread. I don't know what exactly inspired the dread. It's somewhere in there, but I don't know where. Now, Stephen has a Patreon account. It's in this. Is it? It's in his. The name that he goes by now, Stephen Schellenberger. I subscribed to that for a while, and his intro video which is available on YouTube. And that's why I don't like Patreon because the material there is not exclusive enough it's like you can find it on vimeo or youtube if it's a video it's like you can sort of have a link to it there but you can find it outside so it's like it's not exclusive anyhow the video his intro video on patreon it he shows some of his artwork there and there's one point in it when i see two words in artwork is either no ritual or no sacrifice i can't remember which but when i saw that i felt a sense of like dread, like a cold dread in my stomach. I know what he's referring to, but I don't know why I feel that sort of dread when I see those two words, because it just feels like a really palpable, it just feels like a really real dread, and I can't understand it, but I felt it. His wife, Kim Onge, has one channel, maybe she has more on YouTube. There's a link to it down below. And the artwork that Stephen shows there, I wouldn't want that where I'm living. It's sort of dreadful, not rubbish, like, isn't that crap? It's like, it fills me with dread. It's, it's like, this is, the, these are the sort of pictures. I wouldn't want them on my wall in case at night time when the sun's sort of like, goes down, you know, they come out and they get me. It's, it's a horrible feeling. And these drawings that he's done, they remind me of a story that my mother read to me when I was a little girl. It's a Chinese story and it's called The Boy Who Drew Cats or The Boy Who Painted Cats. Now this story, it's about this young 
Chinese boy. And from the moment he could sort of like hold a paintbrush or, you know, or whatever, paintbrush, he'd start painting cats and he'd paint them on the walls. He just kept painting cats, cats, cats. Now one day, this Buddhist monk comes and the mother is hospitable to him because he's a religious holy man, he's spiritual. He knows about, you know, spiritual things. And this Buddhist monk, he sees this boy and he gives this advice to the mother. He says to her, make sure your son, when he goes to sleep at night, he sleeps in a small space. Not just like, just go to a small room, like shut himself like in a cupboard, something like that. So the mother, she respects him and she makes sure that her son does this. Now her son grows up and he becomes a man and he wants to go out in the world and he wants to find a job. So he takes all his, you know, his artist materials and he goes out in search for someone who will hire him. And he goes walking, walking, goes out of, out of the village he's from. And he comes to this place and it, evening is com is evening is coming and he's got nowhere to stay. And there's this house there, but people, they're not willing to put him up in this sort of place that he's gone to. And they're saying, you shouldn't stay at that place because that place is like, it's haunted. But this young man, he's thinking, well, where else am I gonna sleep? If I sleep out sort of like, I can't sleep out in the open. I've got to find somewhere with a small space. So maybe it's haunted, but I have to follow the advice of this Buddhist monk. So he goes into this haunted house. And as he usually does, he, start, he gets out, you know, his paintbrush and his materials, and he starts painting on the walls because that's just what he does. He always paints cats. Anyhow, nighttime comes and he realizes I've got to go to sleep. So he finds a cupboard and he shuts himself like, in it and he sleeps. And that night he hears all sorts of horrible noises, but he, he, no, he stays where he is. And the next morning when he wakes up, you know, it's sort of like sunlight there, opens a the cupboard door, gets up. He looks at the cats on the wall and they're there, but the paintings aren't just of cats. They've, these cats now have these rats, which are like dripping blood because the cats have killed these rats. He didn't paint that there. And the that was how the story ended. And I found that very like disturbing as a child because to me it wasn't like, that's not a proper ending. But I think basically what it was was like, this Buddhist monk's advice had finally, it had finally um, paid or at least shown why it was because this young man, he had a gift or an ability. Maybe it's not really like a gift, but his ability, it was dark, it was dangerous, but handled correctly, it could be very, very self-protective. I think if this young man had slept out in the open, I don't know what would have happened, but um. He followed the Buddhist monk's advice and this ability that he had actually saved his life. I mean, if he hadn't sort of like slept in a small space, maybe those rats would have got him. Maybe the cats would have got him too. I don't know. But there's something about Stephen Schallenberger's artwork. It made me think of that. And Stephen, after he split with his ex number three, his ex-wife, in 95, he went through some very, um, he went through a great deal of upheaval and he was homeless at one point. And he mentions that um, there was one point he was, he had nowhere to stay. He was just staying, I think, sleeping on someone's sofa and he was just compelled to do artwork because create stuff, because that's just basically what kept him going. So like, you know, basically you're homeless, but you know, creating art, even if it doesn't particularly make you money, it just keeps you going because that's what he's, and that sort of, this sort of, or, there's something about this connection with the story about the cats. It ties in with that because Stephen's creativity with his artwork, it's not something like, it's just a part of him. And it helped him to get through a very rough time in his life, even if it didn't actually at that point, provide him with much material reward. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much all. No, no, that's not all that I have to say. It's something about Stephen's artwork. There's a feeling of dread that I've mentioned in 
his film The Spark and also his writings. It's a free-floating dread, but in his artwork, when I look at it, I just feel it palpably because his artwork, maybe because it's a physical medium, it holds the emotion in a more concentrated, more static form, whereby you can feel it more strongly. So feel free to check out the artwork. I think that's all I've got to say for it. Say about this for now.